Let's dive into this year's What's New in Flutterflow and recap. 40.9 million widgets were used, 1.6 million projects and 2 billion lines of code created, 1 million users on Flutterflow, and 20,000 deployed apps to the App Store. And we're just getting started. In 2024, we're going to continue to build different and make building on Flutterflow even better. Now let's get into some product updates. First up, Flutterflow now supports API-based authentication so you can build apps that integrate with any custom backend. To get started, go to Settings, Authentication, and set the authentication type to Custom. You can now use the Add New Custom Authentication to log an action on any interaction or log out or update. Simply make the necessary API call and update the user ID and authentication slash refresh tokens with the login action, and you're good to go. Next up is a new carousel widget. Drag this onto your canvas in order to display a series of items such as images or cards that a user can swipe through. For example, here, I'm using it to display a series of travel destinations. This widget allows you to easily set the distance between objects, how large the main element will be using the properties such as viewport fraction and shrink size. In addition, we've also added a series of carousel actions such as next, first, and jump to to help you in your build. Next up, we listened to your feedback and made some upgrades to working with actions. Although you've always had the ability to add multi-conditions, we've made it easier for you to see condition labels no matter how many you have. Next, you can now also change the action names to make it easier to identify your app logic. And finally, you can add any documentation on conditional actions or loops. Happy building. Next up, working with APIs just got a lot simpler. With our new JSON to data type feature, you can create a data type with the same structure as your API response and convert the JSON returned by the API to the data type. First, let's set up the data type in our data schema tab. Now you'll only need to create this data type once for your entire project. Next, we're gonna create an app state variable with the data type that we created. And finally, once we pass in our API call, and it succeeds, you can route the appropriate fields of our JSON response into our created data type by updating our app state variable. Now we can avoid typos in our JSON paths or requests. Next, you can now use your keyboard to more quickly navigate through the widget tree. Use the up and down arrows to move between a parent and child widget and use the left and right arrows to move between the siblings of a parent widget. This should help you build a lot faster in Flutterflow. And we had so many more product improvements in October that you can see here. However, if you want a full list, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter or check out the community page. Now on to November. We now automatically detect and provide recommendations to make your apps more beautiful and performant. First up is our UI enhancements tab, which identifies suggestions to make your UI more beautiful or accessible. It's like having a design expert right by your side, helping you create the best possible experience for your users. Simply click on the UI enhancement recommendation to go to that property panel and make the recommended adjustments. And then we also have an optimizations tab. Here you can identify items that could lead to performance issues in your application. This includes things like having unused queries, having the query on a wrong widget, or having an unbounded image amongst other issues. Once again, as soon as you click on the optimization suggestion, it'll take you to the page where you can make the changes needed. Next up is one of our favorite features, Flows. Flows are a collection of pre-configured pages and components to add specific functionality to your app. In addition to UI elements, Flows include actions, logic, and schema. In just one click, you can add powerful functionality to your application. For example, we have Flows for account creation, group chat, and even to add AI to your application. Next, Flutterflow now supports enums. If you care about type safety and avoiding bugs, because of typos in your JSON path or document field, then enums are for you. Enums are a data type that include a fixed number of constant values. For example, in this example, I'm using the enum for role and creating different possible user states. They're perfect for scenarios where your UI state changes based on certain conditions. To start working with enums, head to data types and add a new enum. You can even add an enum data type into your documents within Firebase. Now, you can also define app-wide constants that can be used throughout your project. Constants are fixed values that never change. To start working with constants, 
head to app values and select constants. In this example, I'm adding in a constant for the video path that I'd like to use in my application. Since I'll be using this video path in multiple different places, this is a super helpful way for me to keep that video path handy. And if I ever need to change the video path, I can always do that by going into my constants variable. Furthermore, we've upgraded our search to include the names of pages, components, API calls, variables, and custom code. For example, I want to know where my app state variable show users is being used. So I'll click on this purple icon and I'll be able to navigate to where this app state variable is actually being used. With this upgrade, you can quickly navigate your project and see how elements are being used. In November, we also announced our OneSignal integration, which means effortless email and SMS messaging are here to stay. With this integration, you can now perform two key actions. Add a user with tags, which allows you to seamlessly register users to receive email or SMS messaging and categorize them with tags for targeted communication. And second is to delete the user, which is to allow you to maintain a clean slate by removing users from receiving notifications when necessary. So now imagine triggering bespoke email and SMS campaigns the moment a user account is created or customizing messages based on user behavior. This is what's possible with OneSignal and Flutterflow. Next up, our new Markdown widget lets you seamlessly integrate rich text formatting using simple Markdown syntax. It allows you to format text easily without the complexity of a full-fledged what you see is what you get editor or the need to write HTML code. You could use this widget in various applications like note-taking apps, forums, privacy policies, or for blogging platforms. They are particularly popular in technical and coding communities for their ease of formatting code snippets and descriptions. Finally, another favorite feature, Manage Firebase. We can now create and configure a new Firebase project for you. Just select the name and project region and we'll handle the rest. You no longer have to add service accounts or configure a new database. Next, you can now toggle on a text field to have focus using the new widget focus state option in the variable dropdown menu. This lets you show or hide animations or components when the user focuses on a particular form field. We've also added the ability to trigger an action when the focus state changes on a text field, either when the user focuses on a text field or moves away from it. This lets you build tailored experiences where a UI can react intuitively as the user navigates from one field to another. In this example, I'm showing how toggling on the focus state allows us to create a snack bar. And there were so many more updates from November, such as being able to set image height and width by variable, having the ability to see your test mode status dependent on the color, and even design systems being able to support widgets that generate children dynamically, and so much more. Now let's move on to December. Previously, actions in a sequence would wait for the preceding action to finish before executing. Now we've introduced a non-blocking option which allows actions to execute even if the previous action hasn't been completed. Simply toggle it on on any action block. Next up, we've made some big updates to make it faster and easier to work with backend queries. First up, we've updated our UI to show a summary of the filters and ordering you have on a query. Secondly, you can now copy and paste backend queries across widgets, so you'll never need to recreate the same query twice. And third, We've added a new option to move a query up to any parent or ancestor of the widget if you want to make quick changes to your backend query. Continuing the theme of improving UX across the board, our newest drafts feature automatically saves your progress on API calls, custom code, and backend queries. Now you can easily return and continue to work right where you left off. And while we're on the topic of UX, you can now rename and modify the names of your app state fields and the names of your constants. Now you'll never need to delete and recreate an item just to change the name. Next up, we've made some upgrades to make it easier to work with Booleans. First, we've added a new conditions flow so you no longer need to select single condition versus multiple conditions. Next, we've added a is set and not empty operation slash reducer on the list. And we've, we automatically now create a condition for variables that don't have a Boolean operation or reducer. Another quick Flutterflow tip, if you want to see where a component is used in your project, just select that widget, right click and select show usage. This will help you find where your components are used even as your project grows larger. 
to end December, we continue to focus on bug fixes and user experience improvements that are shown below. Once again, you can find a complete list on our community. That's all the updates we have for this video. Thank you for building different and building together with us this year. We can't wait to make Flutterflow even better for you in 2024. Happy Holidays.